In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to install our new Chiron LCD upgrade kit. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and unplug the printer and turn off the power switch. So next we're going to do is take out these two bolts here and we're going to save these and the T-nuts for the new screen mount. And then take out these four screws here that hold this back panel in so we can disconnect this cable from the stock LCD. You can see here, this is held in with just a little clip. Go ahead and push down and the connector will disconnect. Now, with the printer turned right side up, we're going to go ahead and take these four screws out of the panel here so we can get inside the control box. Now that we have the control box panel removed, we're going to go ahead and disconnect the cables going to the breakout board. And for this little guy, there's a little lift tab. And that will release the cable. We're going to go ahead and unplug this from the PCB. You will have to take the two screws off on the back side here that holds this fan mount in place. Now with the fan out of the way, we can go ahead and take this board off, pull it straight off. Do not take it off at an angle. Go ahead and unscrew the SD slot here and make sure to save these screws. Take two of the M3 screws that we took off the SD slot and we're going to use those to install the cover for the SD slot. Go ahead and take this ribbon cable and pull it down to the lower portion of the printer. And you can remove this cable. It will not pull through because of the connectors, but if we push the pins out of here to release the wires from the housing, we can go ahead and do that to remove this cable. This will no longer be needed with the LCD conversion. Now that we have the connector off the end, we can go ahead and pull this through. Now we're going to take the PCB housing. We're going to put the PCB into the housing. The beeper lines up with this cutout here. And you want to make sure that the headers line up with the holes in the actual housing here. And it should fit just like that. If we look in there, you can see that the pin headers line up with the holes in the bottom. Go ahead and put this on top. Make sure that the little retaining clips here are pushed in before you put the top on. And we're going to slide it over just like this. And there's our PCB in the housing. So this housing will get mounted down here with the two included screws and washers through the vent hole. But before we put it down here, we're going to connect the jumpers to the holes here and then connect those up to the main board to make the connections. Now I'll go ahead and put a diagram on screen showing which one of these goes to what pin on the main board. And if you want, you can go ahead and pause the video so you can see where they go. So now we're going to go ahead and take some male to female jumpers that came in the DuPont jumper pack. And we want the ones with the male end and the female end, and you're going to need nine total. If you look here, the color changes every 10. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull back nine and peel them off. 
And I'm going to go ahead and make the connections from the breakout box to the board right now. I've got the four here connected. I'm going to go ahead and get the other five connected up top. So if we look here, I've connected the three end stop connections up here, the five volt and the ground wires here, and then our thermistor connections down here. Now, if you want to make sure that these never come out, we did make this box so it does encase the connector so they can't be accidentally bumped but if you pull straight out they will come out if you want to just throw a little dot of hot glue on top of these you can same thing for this side if you want to put a little dot of hot glue to keep these from moving you can do that as well but we're not going to do that since i don't feel it's needed the next thing we're going to do is connect the bed thermistor plug to the breakout box which is this two pin cable here that we just connected earlier and then also plug the ribbon cable into the ribbon cable port and this box is going to mount like this between the last two vent slots here just like this if this power supply is hitting the top of the case you can loosen up this screw here and here and that will allow you to slide the power brick up a little bit to get more clearance between this plug and the top of this box so we're going to go ahead and take two of the screws that came with the kit And we're going to go ahead and put the little washer on that we included. Just like this. If you look, the washer itself is keyed to fit into the slot. So make sure you get it into the slot in the correct position. You can see here, I can move it up and down. And this bottom one will bite into this hole. Make sure this case is fully squeezed because the screw will penetrate both pieces of the case. Once you have one in, go ahead and put the second one in. Make sure not to over tighten this because you are going into the printed part. So now we have all the connections made. We're almost done with the upgrade. Now, before we close all this up, we want to make sure that these cables are not going to interfere with anything. So I'd recommend taking the thermistor line and putting it right here and then take the ribbon cable and put it above the MOSFET. You can take these ribbon cables and just snake them down like so. And before you before we put the fan back on, you got to make sure these two wires are out of the way. So kind of move them up here before you put the fan back on, because otherwise this little piece here on the duct will hit them and it won't go on fully. So go ahead and put this fan back in place. You can see there there's the two screw holes. So I'm going to go ahead on the other side and put this back on. Now, before we go ahead and cap this up, make sure all these pins are still fully inserted into the adapter. You can see mine are, but just double check that before you cap this up, because if you pull up on these, you can pull them out. So now take the two cables that came with the LCD and make sure you have them both in the same orientation. So you can see here, I have the keyed portion of the plug facing me and the red stripe is on the right on both sides. So go ahead and plug one of these into EXP2 and the other one into the EXP one header. So what I'll do, so I know which ones these are, once they're at the LCD, I'll write a number two on the EXP two and a number one on the EXP one cable. So at this point, we're done in the bottom of the control box. You can go ahead and put the lid back on that we took off earlier. So now before we put the cover back on, go ahead and snake the cables out through the second slot here. Just like that. And then go ahead and reinstall the cover. Once we get the screen back on, if you have excess cables, you can go ahead and just push it back into the housing here.
So the next thing we're going to do is install this LCD screen into the housing. If the knob is already on the screen, go ahead and pull it off. We're going to go ahead and put the screen in, make sure the encoder knob goes through the encoder knob hole. And the screen should align itself in the housing just like this. We're going to go ahead and put a screw in each corner here. Now make sure you do not over tighten the screws. If you over tighten the screws and you turn the LCD on and there's some bars missing, go ahead and back them off. So I'm going to go ahead and take four of the screws that we included with the kit and use these to secure the screen into the housing. So as you can see here, the screen's in the housing. We can go ahead and put the knob back on. If for some reason you don't like the knob that's included with the screen, there are a couple different styles that we ship with. There's a little metal one like this, and there's also a plastic one. There are other knobs on Thingiverse that fit these style LCDs, such as this one right here. And even a little Prusa style one. I think I'm gonna go with this knurled one for this build. That looks nice. So the next thing we need to do is put the two screws that came off the factory mount through the holes here. And push them through. Now these holes are sized pretty well, but if there's some resistance, just go ahead and force the screw through the hole. Go ahead and affix the T-nuts to the end of the screws. Just thread them on a couple of threads so they don't fall off. And you're going to want to have them in this orientation so they go into the extrusion. I found since the angle on here is steep because we matched the stock angle of the original LCD, the easiest way to secure these to the frame is to use a ball end style Allen wrench that comes with most 3D printers. And this one is a three millimeter one. So go ahead and put this into the extrusion here and you're gonna to want to go ahead and put this into the end here and turn this really fast to turn the T-nut in the extrusion so it bites in. And now the screen is mounted to the printer frame. Go ahead and connect the EXP1 cable to the EXP1 header on the screen and the 2 to the EXP2 header on the screen. So EXP1 is this plug here, and EXP2 is this plug here that's closest to the SD slot. So you can see here, one, and two. So at this point, we're ready to update the firmware. If we turn the printer on, the LCD should light up. If it doesn't light up, you'll have to rotate these plugs 180 degrees, and there is a Help Center article linked below on doing that. This is due to cable differences and header differences between these LCDs and the printer control boards. So as you can see, the LCD lights up, but we're not going to get anything on the screen. So let's go ahead and move on to the firmware update. So before we start the firmware update, you will need to have the printer powered on and plugged into your computer with a USB cable. So the next thing you'll need to do is go to our website and either click on Help Center or you can go directly there by typing in support.th3dstudio.com. Go ahead and type Chiron Firmware and you'll want to click the Anycubic Chiron Firmware Tri Gorilla Board. So go ahead and download the firmware and extract this to a folder on your computer. I'm going to extract this to a folder in my downloads folder called Chiron Firmware. I'll go ahead and select all the text and copy this and hit OK. So now we're going to need to go ahead and load VS Code. If you don't already have VS Code set up, you can see right here on the firmware page, there is a link to our VS Code installation guide. So if you don't have VS Code already, go ahead and pause the video and set up VS Code with our installation directions. Go ahead and click Open Folder and paste in the path where we extracted the files and hit Enter. 
and then double click firmware. Hit select folder. Now we want to go ahead and expand the little Marlin folder on the left and then double click configuration.h. What we need to do is uncomment the Chiron line here and to do that we just remove these two slashes and then go ahead and do a control S to save the file and let's go ahead and click the build option to make sure our computer can build the firmware. Now this may take a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes depending on the speed of your computer. We can see here at the bottom that our computer successfully built the firmware and now we can go ahead and upload it to our board by clicking the upload button. Now if your computer has multiple COM ports like mine does you can go ahead and click the little home button and go to devices and you'll see I have two items listed here. I know COM1 is my built-in computer's COM port, and that means my printer's on COM16. If you're not sure, you can go ahead and unplug the printer, click refresh, and you'll see it disappear. You can see all I have left is COM1. I'll plug the printer back into my computer, and go ahead and hit refresh again, and we can see it's on COM16. Now to tell VS Code that we want to upload to COM16, we can go ahead and go to INI, AVR.INI, and you can see right here the Mega2560 settings. Go ahead and uncomment the pound sign, and we're going to tell it COM16. Save the file, and then now we can go ahead and hit upload. If all your COM port settings are correct, you will see the firmware getting uploaded to the printer. And it will do a write and then a verification to read. Now my computer is almost done verifying and then the board will restart and we should see the logo. Now you will get an EEPROM error like we're seeing here because we changed the firmware. Go ahead and select reset and you'll hear a confirmation beep. So at this point we can see our bed and hot end temperature thermistors are reading correctly. My printer is ready to be homed. Everything's off the bed. There's nothing in the way. So I'm going to go ahead and test it out. So we can see that we successfully homed. This firmware does have the dual end stop leveling set up by default. So if your X gantry is on level, it will use the stock dual end stops to level out the gantry for you. So now everything is done and we can use our printer. And just like that, we have a more usable Chiron. I hope you guys really enjoy this kit. It took a lot of time and thinking to figure out how to work around this interesting setup they have with the PCB header and the stock touchscreen. I hope you guys enjoy having more control of your printer and an easier time using it with the 12864 screen. Now, if you do have an Easy ABL that you're going to be putting on your Chiron, the installation is about the same as our normal Easy ABL installation, except you do not replace the Z end stop. There is an additional Help Center article specific for the Chiron that guides you through wiring the Easy ABL control board to the Chiron stock board. You will use some of the jumper wires that came with the LCD kit to make those connections. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below. You can also reach our technical support team by going to contactus.th3dstudio.com. And if you visit our website during business hours, we also have live chat available on our site. Hope you enjoy this upgrade and I hope this video is clear and concise to get the kit installed on your Chiron. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy printing.